This is probably the most important song in blues history. Not because it's in 12 bars or has an AAB rhyme scheme, or even that it's in a 145 chord progression, although it is in all those things. It's because it's a perennial blues standard and seems to pop up just at the right time. Robert Johnson penned this song in the 1930s. And by penned it, I mean, well, he was probably influenced by several other people. But that being said, he was the man who went down to the crossroads and sold his soul to the devil, so why let the truth get in the way of a good story? Robert Johnson recorded 29 songs, and the one I'm talking about wasn't even one of his most popular at the time. Now, tragically, Robert Johnson only lived to 27 years old. Some say he was killed by a jealous husband, some say it was syphilis, but whatever it was, the hellhounds finally caught up to him in 1938. The blues moved north in the 1950s, and people like Howlin' Wolf and Muddy Waters, well, they modernized it. Like good stories, good songs have a tendency to pop up again and again, and Junior Parker scored a hit with the one I'm talking about back in 1958. Now, as the 50s drew to a close, the blues started to fall out of favor, but a couple of British kids would discover the likes of Robert Johnson, Sunhouse, and Big Bill Brunzi and put their own spin on the blues. Now some of those kids I'm talking about were Keith Richards, Mick Jagger, Peter Green, and Eric Clapton, just to name a couple of those. And while many of those guys would do a version of the song I'm talking about, I think the definitive electric version came in 1967 by Magic Sam. His take on this track, on his West Side Soul album, would become the definitive electric version. As the 60s gave way to the 70s, the blues would take a backseat to the likes of prog, punk, and even disco. But two comedians would breathe new life into this song in the 1980s. The Blues Brothers, played by Dan Aykroyd and John Belushi, and their all-star backing band, made their debut on Saturday Night Live in 1978, but it was at the climactic scene in their 1988 film where they paid tribute to the song, and by doing so even called out Mr. Magic Sam himself. The 80s saw a bit of a resurgence in the blues with a fiery Texas guitar player by the name of Stevie Ray Vaughan. Stevie would introduce a whole new generation to the blues and inspire countless guitar players. Now, Stevie's career would tragically be cut short on August 27, 1990. The helicopter he was in crashed and killed everyone on board. He had just finished playing a gig where he shared the stage with Buddy Guy, Eric Clapton, Robert Cray, and his brother, Jimmy Vaughn. And can you guess what song those guys played? <laughs> Now, this song story doesn't end tragically there. Now, even Stevie Ray Vaughan's death couldn't kill the blues. It would keep moving and evolving like it always does. In February of 2012, the song would find its way to being sung by the President of the United States of America. In performance at the White House, Red, White, and Blues, a celebration of blues music was held in the East Room of the White House. Now, this celebration saw performances by the likes of B.B. King, Shamiga Copeland, Mick Jagger, Jeff Beck, and Buddy Guy, just to name a few. And it was at the closing song that Buddy Guy coaxed the then President of the United States, Barack Obama, to get up on stage and sing this track. It came from the Mississippi Delta in the 1930s and found its way to the White House in 2012. The song I'm talking about, the most important song in the history of the blues, is Sweet Home Chicago. Oh, come on, baby, don't you want to go? Yeah, come on, baby, don't you want to go? Back to the land of California, sweet home Chicago. Chicago. 